Welcome, and thank you for joining with us today at Evangelist Crusaders Church. We're so happy that you decided to view this webcast from your home or wherever you might be watching us and making us a part of your Sunday morning worship. I'm going to be giving you some announcements a little later on in a few moments, but I just want to encourage you today and let you know that God loves you. He cares about everything that concerns you, and we are praying for you, and we love you as well. Because of Jesus living on the inside of our hearts, you got him on the inside of your heart, that makes us one big family. So be encouraged today. Now, wherever you are viewing this webcast, perhaps it's over our website, and that's located at www.evangelistcrusaders.com, or perhaps you've tuned into our YouTube channel or are viewing us on our Facebook page, and that's at Evangelist Crusaders Church. Some of you have inquired and some of you have been faithfully supporting our ministry in finances, and we just want to encourage you to continue to do so. We are so thankful for you. We want to encourage you to go to the mobile app, Give LaFi, and you can find us at Evangelist Crusaders, Inc. The address is 4307 Fourth Avenue South. You could also find that Give LaFi link on our webpage. So we just want to encourage you to continue on and perhaps you want to drop us a card or a letter. You can send that written correspondence to our post office box. That's P.O. Box 7291, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and the zip code is 55407. We are encouraged by your cards and your letters. Perhaps you want to just hit like down below or love down below. Maybe you want to share this and have maybe a watch party or, or share it with some friends and family please do so. It doesn't matter whether it's in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening. Jesus is still moving by his spirit. So now let's go right into the service. Listen and be blessed. Thank you for joining with us here today at Evangelist Crusaders Church. It's a beautiful, blessed Sunday morning, and we're so happy that you joined in here with us via the web. We know that there are many, many places where you can tune in, but we're happy and grateful that you've decided to worship right along with us. Now, the word of the Lord today is going to come, and I trust that it's going to bless your soul, going to give you some hope. It's going to encourage your heart, and as they say, help you to go a little further. So we're going to go directly into the word, and I have titled this message on today, There is a Hope. Many times we say there is hope, but today we're saying there is a hope. We're going to go directly to the Psalms, and we're going to be in chapter 71, verse 5, and it reads as follows. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. You and I both know that we're living in turbulent times right now, all across the face of this earth. We're facing things that we thought we would never face until it came time for the tribulation period or getting close to the rapture of the Lord. We don't know where we are on God's timeline, but we do know that quite different things are happening all around the world. But God wants us to rest assured that he's still in control. God is still on the throne. He still got you. He still loves you if you desire that, if you have allowed him to do that. So even as the scripture says, he has been my confidence since my youth, he can be your confidence as well. Fear is literally gripping the heart of men and women across this earth because this is the unknown. People have never been here before. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to act. There's seemingly not enough facts are coming out. It's just a lot of opinions because nobody has been in this situation before. Now, I want you to consider that this current situation is affecting everybody. It's not just affecting the United States or maybe India or some other part of the world, but it's literally affecting everybody at the same season. And you might be even hearing statements, and you might have even made this statement yourself that says, never in my lifetime have I seen this or experienced this. Never. And uncertainty is causing people to lose hope in getting past this season. Well, I'm coming to you today to let you know there is a hope. You don't have to lose hope. All you need is hope. And Jesus Christ said he is our very hope. Now, in some places, just come to my attention that there's even unrest, unrest rather, arising. 
People are rising up. They, they don't want to be shut in anymore. They want to get out. They want to do things, but they're not considering all the safety measures. And so there's even unrest where people are demanding answers. And they want to have answers that are factual and not based on what people's opinions are, but they want the facts. And now people are coming out of their homes and they're protesting, believe it or not. I, I don't know if they're doing the social distancing or not, but they're protesting. But God says this, when that fear tries to grip your heart, in Psalms 46, 1, he says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. So no matter what you might be seeing on TV or listening to on the radio or in conversation with family or on Facebook or social media, don't let that fear grip your heart because he is not the one who is the author of that. He said that he came to give us that sound mind. It's the enemy of our souls who comes to steal and kill and destroy and bring that spirit of fear upon you. So I want you to grab a hold to this hope on today and know that God loves you. Our Father cares about everything that concerns you. That means the ups and the downs. That means your joys and your sorrows, the sickness and the pain. Anything you might be experiencing right now, he cares about you. And some of you might be feeling like, why would he care about me? Well, he created you. And he gave his only begotten son to die for you. And he loves you. And his word says this in Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing be your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. I'm not making this up. This is in the Bible. So if we can get our laser focus back on God and off of this situation, still being safe, still conducting ourselves accordingly, still doing what we're supposed to be doing, hand washing and everything else, but put your focus back on God. I guarantee you that that peace will begin to come upon you and that fear will have to go. And the very presence of the living God can enter into wherever you might be there listening to me right now, in your homes or wherever you are watching this video. He can enter in right there and overshadow you with his peace. God loves you all, and he sees all, and he's all-knowing. And yes, he loves us in spite of ourselves. Just think about that. You know how you are, but just think of it this way. You don't even know you the way he knows you, and he still loves you. He still loves me in spite of ourselves because his love is unconditional, and that's what he's asking for us to have for one another, unconditional love. And he's not expecting us, in case you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he's not expecting us to get ourselves together, as some people might think, clean ourselves up, uh, get it right, put some things down, pick up some other things, because there's absolutely nothing that men, women, boys, or girls can do to get themselves right before they come before the throne of God. That's why he gave Jesus. Jesus paid the price so that you wouldn't have to go through any of that. So all you have to do is ask him. This is why God sent his son, and this is why he allowed him to minister and walk on the face of the earth and go through everything that he went through. This is why the father allowed his son to come here and why Jesus laid down his life for you and I so that we would have that advocate, we would have that right to get that help. The Bible says in another portion of scripture that we can come to his throne of grace boldly to obtain favor in our time of need. If you were here in the congregation, I would say, let me see the hands of all those that stand in need right now of some favor, that stand in need of some peace, that stand in need of some joy, that stand in need of a hope. I bet I would see almost 100% of the congregation raising their hands, and perhaps you're right there raising your hand. I want to let you know the good news. You can have it. Jesus said many times, he said, he declared, when you see me, you have seen the Father, meaning that me and the Father are one. So when Jesus laid down his life, he gave you and I the right to use his name because he is an advocate for us. We no longer have to go to man to go and go to a, a high priest somewhere or to another man or another woman to ask for forgiveness of our sins. But because Jesus died on the cross, all we have to do is go to the Father God and pray and then end your prayer like this. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Because that power in Jesus' name has been conveyed to you and I and given to us as a right once we accept his sacrifice for our sins. I want to let you know that Jesus does want to hear from you. He wants to comfort you during this time. He wants you to have his peace, and he gives us the formula for obtaining it. In his word, he says in Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything. 
But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, my friend, God's word has an answer for everything that ails us. And so the more that you get into God's word, the more that you talk to the writer of his word, which is God the Father, Jesus Christ, the more peace you're going to have. The main thought in this previous scripture that I wrote is that all we have to do is ask. Now, as I previously said, some of you might feel like you don't have a right, but he said you do because Jesus paid the price that all you have to do is go to the Father and ask. And he said that he's never going to force us because some might say, well, why doesn't he just, you know, have us to have that mind and that heart to serve him no matter what? Why do we have this? It's because he made man when he created man to have a free will. And so men, women, boys and girls all over this earth have a free will to choose. Now, I dare say many of us have chosen incorrectly down through our years and in our lifetime. We may have made some bad choices, but God never stopped loving us. He's given us that free will so that we can make the choice, knowing full well that if we make the wrong one, there are consequences. But if we make the right one, there are blessings untold. That right one would be doing it God's way. So much of what is occurring in our world today is because of man's free will and the choices that we make on a daily basis. Jesus had the hard part, and he makes it so simple for you and I. The word of Lord was given to us to help in every aspect of our life. And he wants to assure you today that he is here and his promises are in the Bible. In the word of God, we go to Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. And he says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He's like your daddy and your big brother and your uncle and everybody rolled into one. You ever been running home, maybe it was dark and you were scared, you felt like somebody was following you as a child or maybe there was a bully coming after you. You said, if I could just make it home, my daddy, my uncle, my brother, they're going to be there. You're going to have that sigh of relief and you're going to feel like I'm good now. Well, that's the way the father is with us. Now, we don't want to neglect to acknowledge that we do understand that many are sick among us. And many have made that transition to leave this world and to go into their transition to another. It's heartbreaking news on a daily basis. In the word of the Lord, he says in Psalms 103, verses 2 to 3, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals your diseases. And maybe some of you who are listening, maybe you have a loved one who has gone on. Maybe you have lost a loved one. I want you to know that your pain and your sorrow and your grief does not escape the Lord God. He sees it. He understands it. When maybe the rest of us can only be empathetic and give you a hug, and well, we can't hug you right now, but we can give you some kind words of encouragement and show you some love in other ways, God knows what you're going through because he gave his son, his only begotten son, to die on the cross and to experience that death. So he knows what you're going through. We're praying for you. We're praying for your family, for those who are maybe sick in hospitals or maybe riding it out at home. As this ministry continues to function, we are praying. We are praying for you, and I want you to rest in that. But as the people of God now, more than ever before, our heart needs to be filled with that love and compassion for our Savior and of our Savior. It's not the time to be judging. It's not the time to say this is God's wrath. It's not the time to try to be a last day prophet and try to declare what the mind and the word of the Lord is. For the Bible says, who can know it? Who can know the mind of the Lord? Because his ways are above his, our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. So unless the Lord has directly told you beyond the shadow of a doubt, this is not the time to be judging others. It's the time to show love because he tells us in another portion of scripture that by this shall all men know, and that means women to know that you are my disciples when you have loved one to another. This is the time to begin to show that love. 
So our hands need to be the hands of Jesus. And we have to put some legs on our prayers. And we have to do whatever we can do as the people of God. And we know that there are limitations. But I am so blessed as I see all the many ingenious ways that people are seeking out how to love their neighbor, how to help their neighbor. And I've begun to see scripture footage, and I'll say it like this, from all around the world. This next scripture is literally the epitome of what I've been seeing all around the world. I have been seeing footage from Brazil. I've seen uh, footage from other countries where literally, while practicing that six foot social distancing, men, women, boys and girls are literally on their knees, lining the very streets of their cities with their hands upstretched toward God, interceding in prayer, crying out to God in prayer. And they are, I say, the very epitome of this scripture. For in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he tells us, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. I am almost certain that we are beginning to feel connected to all the people around the world as we are beginning to fight this together. And as the body of Christ is praying all around the world, there is that spiritual connection. Rest assured that COVID-19 is not a surprise to God. I'm not saying that God created this or caused it to happen. However, he can cause whatever the devil meant for evil, he can turn it around for your good and bring glory to his name. That's, that's not the way that God operates. Have you noticed by now and maybe even experienced the actual benefits that are coming to mankind as a result of this? Now you might think, Reverend Maria, what kind of good is coming out of this? I want you to take note. It's like a reset set button has been pushed on the earth. You know, on your computer when they say, when in doubt, shut it off. Or if you need to reset to manufacture a setting, sometimes you need to do that because things are just too haywire on your computer. Well, it's like a reset button has been pushed on the earth. And it's given this world, given the state of the world that we were in and the inhabitants before any of this occurred, it is truly a good thing. I know that you were here, you might be shouting amen. We saw what was going on in our earth before this happened. We saw the racism, the hatred, the poverty, the sickness, all kinds of inequities and injustices. And it's all, now everybody is sheltering in place and the reset button has been pushed. Now we have documentation, proof. It is well documented that by now families are drawing closer together finding new ways to be together in love and peace. There's no longer the excuse of not having any time to spend with our children, our spouse, and anyone else that might be living in the same house as when this epidemic first hit. It is still about choice. So are you choosing to talk things out, to be more understanding? Are you choosing during this time to be more patient, to be more loving and considerate of others who are under the same roof as you, or maybe in the grocery store when you go out to buy supplies. Don't miss this opportunity. It's a reset. The air pollution of this world is just about eradicated. This is documentable. All around the world, waters are cleaning themselves up because man is not outside polluting them every chance he gets. I have a couple of friends that went to Venice recently and they went down that canal in one of those boats. And I've heard people say that it was so nice but that water was so dirty. Do you know that that canal over in Venice right now is crystal clear? If you go down there in a boat right now, you can see to the very bottom, documentable evidence that the earth is on a reset. The sky is bluer. I'm from Los Angeles, California. When I was growing up, I'd fly home and there literally would be a brown blanket over the city because of all the smog. But now the sky is bluer and the air is cleaner than it has been in decades. We as a people are conserving and using what we have instead of being so wasteful. Because in all honesty, we don't know what the food, water, and power situation will be like in the near future. Can I get an amen on that? We're thinking about and helping our neighbor. Can you think about a time when you made a poor decision in your past, or it could be recently, that you got in a pretty bad predicament? Did you ever make this promise to God that if he got you out of this situation, you would, and then you fill in the blank? What you were saying is that you realized that you had just done some things that possibly was going to change your life and not for the good. Let's face it. 
If we're honest, most of us have made that declaration to God at some time in our life. The bottom line is that what we were asking God for is another chance. Well, my friend, the same way this earth is getting another chance to reset back to the original specs, God is giving us another chance to get ourselves right with him. We all have an abundance of time now, and I would imagine that we've been doing a lot of thinking while we're in our homes. Now, you might still be able to work from your home or you're helping children who are learning in the home, but I dare say you could only watch so much TV or so many movies. You got to read. You got to think. You got to clear your mind. You got to stay focused some kind of way to keep your sanity. My prayer is that your thoughts are towards God, the Father and Jesus, his Son. Revelation 3.20 says, here am I. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Psalms 18, 6 says, In my distress, I call to the Lord. I cry to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. Won't you talk with him today? Better yet, how about right now? He loves you and he's here right now and he's here listening to you right now. I can lead you in prayer if you don't know how to pray in any manner. It doesn't matter to God what manner you choose. He is listening to your heart. Will you repeat after me, those of you who may not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God promises that he will hear your prayer, that he will forgive your sin. So if you don't have a savior, if you don't know Jesus, if your sins haven't been forgiven, will you just pray with me right now? Will you just repeat after me? Mean it in your heart, and let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for your son Jesus. I know that I am a sinner. My sins are too numerable to list, but I ask you to forgive me of every single one. I accept your son Jesus' sacrifice for my soul, and I ask you to write my name down in your Lamb's Book of Life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer, I want to let you know that there's a portion of Scripture in the Bible that says that all of heaven is rejoicing right now because you said yes to Jesus. Think about the best birthday party you ever had and all the noisemakers and hats and everything were going on. It's better than that. It says that all of heaven, the angels are saying, you, my friend, Joe, Sally, Sue, or Don, you have made a decision. And now God acknowledges that. And another portion of Scripture, he says, he writes your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, if you prayed and asked God to forgive you, his word states that you are forgiven and that every sin you ever committed is washed away. And he's not like man. The, the minute something goes wrong, he's not going to bring it back up. Remember when you did this? No, he's not like us. He completely washes it away and he will never bring it up to you again. Stay connected to God. Begin to pray. The scripture reference for you and I today, and that prayer is in St. John 3.16, very familiar. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now it's important for you to continue to pray every day. It's no right or wrong way. Just talk to him. Just like you hear me talking to you, talk to God. Read the Bible and ask God for understanding. We're going to be praying for you. But I would just ask, there's probably a number that's scrolling at the bottom of your screen now and some other ways you can contact us. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, will you just go on and drop us a line or, or hit like or put a comment on uh, YouTube or Facebook or something and let us know that you've accepted him as Lord and Savior and maybe we can get in touch with you and send you some information that will help you on this journey. You're on the best journey of your life. I can guarantee you it's not boring, and you are going to be so happy that you made this decision. God bless you, my friends. Until next time.